I was planning to start the video with some pets around since this isn't gonna be a normal weekend vlog. We got the garden tour going on. Figured should say hi to the pets. People love to see the pets. Everybody's hiding, or are they? Hey, pumpkin. You haven't laid in here in a long time. Is it because your cousin's here? Smudges visiting for the weekend. She's gonna be staying here for a couple of nights for the next few weekends. And you love your smudge, don't you? They're very cute together. I'm not used to that with cats. It's kind of a dog thing for them to have a buddy. Those two seem to like each other a lot. No dogs. Bet when I open the front door, you can hear a dog. Hello. Uh, apparently not. The <laughs> October garden tour. Here we are. Not a ton to see in the front yard. Got all these bombs planted up not too terribly long ago. Just like, what, a month ago, if even. They're looking okay. They've had some hard freezes. I didn't really deadhead them, so it would be my phone letting me know that there's a human standing on the front porch. Not a ton has changed here. Some of those mums are going out of flower. Some of them are bouncing back into flower. The Taylor junipers. I'm not going to see anything from those for probably a year. Maybe next year they'll put on some growth, but it's going to be a while. Little gems still needs to be planted. Turns out there's a pipe in the ground where it's supposed to go, so I have to rethink some things. That's just the decorative fall things. Haven't been given those much attention because, you know, mums don't usually need to do all that much for them. I don't even want to plant them anymore. I just want to have a front porch just full of mums. I'm tempted to maybe grab some hay bales and head back to that nursery and grab several more by several i mean like maybe 15 or 20 and just fill the front porch with mums wouldn't that just look fantastic oh but then i i'd have to water them all never mind i don't feel like doing that things are looking nice through the window still parrot's gonna make some noise that's just what he does parrots make noise before we get out to the backyard and start talking about what's going on out there look at this isn't that nice is it gonna focus no apparently it's not nice enough for the camera some glass gem corn this is the only ear i got that looks Somewhat decent. The rest of them are looking pretty sad. Yeah. Some nice color on them, but there's still a lot left to be desired with those. What's your problem? Remember that thing being so hard to make stand upright? The corn that I planted. Didn't use fresh soil when I planted the corn, so I'm not surprised by that. I just tossed some seeds in a pot, put a drip head on it, and walked away from it for five months and said, oh, hopefully it'll do something. And it did. Kind of did. I have some plants sitting outside on the table I need to do something with, and Let's get the garden garden tour. October garden tour is not much of a garden tour. And get rolling in on the, oh, hey, what's up garden friends? Jeff, how's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. I'm great. Now remember to do the intro. Off to a great start. Most of the websites that I looked at when I was reading about getting one of these xanthosomas, the lime zingers, the majority of them said hardy zone nine, hardy zone 10, and I don't know if I agree with that. You can look at it. You can see right here, there's some damage on here, but considering it was in the mid-20s, I'm going to say this isn't looking too bad, right? And it still has a nice growth coming out from the inside. Even the younger growth, which I would expect to be really damaged, really isn't. So uh, perhaps that's just another case of the internet's just full of lies and misinformation. <laughs> that's okay, pushing things a little bit too far there. I almost forgot to bring this one inside. This was potted up inside or underplanted with one of my mule palms, so I made sure to get that thrown into a container. Have this geranium here, which is coral sunrise. I had that inside last winter and it did really well, so I figure I should probably take it back inside. Everything else out here, I don't even know where to begin or like <laughs> what the point is of where to begin. Things aren't growing. It's that time of year. I think they're just sort of hanging out. Holden still. I have looked at the extended forecast and it's looking like, hold on. Anybody know what I was saying? I have no idea. It's an hour later. Got a phone call. Somebody needed a ride. There's not a ton to say. Things have stopped growing. That's what I was talking about. The October garden tour is more of just a, here's where we're at. And then maybe some of what's to come. I don't know. Can't make too many predictions. Palm trees are gone. So that's a big difference between this tour and the last tour. Queen palm off to storage. I don't mm, try to remember the order of videos. I haven't talked about this yet. I don't think I have. So I've been thinking next year, the queen palm that's right here might go right there next year. And I'll pull the Adenidia palm and put that there. I have a separate video where I talk about the palm trees where that will make more sense to talk about when you can actually see them. That queen palm, it's just gotten so big that you can barely see it when it's over here. I know that sounds weird because you think the bigger, the more visible it would be, but it's canopy is up inside the pine tree. Have it over here, that'll still somewhat be the case, be able to like see the whole thing. 
up here in this area. And then when sitting at the table and hanging out in this spot, you see more than just a pole, just a trunk. Cause that's all you see with the queen palm is just a trunk. To add an idea, there'll be a couple trunks that'll be underplanted. Eh, oh, that might be the direction I decide to go. Looking at the forecast, the extended forecast, the one that goes about a month out, you can only take those forecasts with a grain of salt, but it's looking like things aren't supposed to be terribly cold for the month of November, which is great. I mean, it's not great that I had to move all the plants in because of two or three days of cold, cold, cold weather, <laughs> but all right, that's just more time to plant. I don't anticipate going through and doing much with whatever annuals are left out here, maybe until December. I could give these a cutback, these impatience, but I don't know what the point would be when they're not likely to rebound and do much more growing. They're just in a standstill at this point, but I'm okay with that. I'd rather have that than cutting them back and not have flowers on them and then not have them do anything. These weren't here during the last garden tour. I need to straighten this one out. We had a ton of wind and some storms, lots of rain. I might have to use a steak on that one. These are spring grove arbs. They are underplanted with cabbage, creeping jenny, just something for some fall winter interest. I'll be happy they're out here in the springtime too. It's always nice having as much green out here as possible when things are still starting to wake up, especially in early spring when I'm spending a lot of time out here, but none of this is here. So all this stuff, that's gonna be down at the ground level. There's gonna be piles of mulch with some foliage. You know, have the dwarf palms here. The little gem magnolia, which I'm so happy to have gotten this planted. I have some more magnolias coming in the mail. We'll talk about that in a minute. This one right here, I need to get this sprayed down. Something to remember before the temperatures are consistently below 50, that anything that needs the wilt proof or any sort of anti-transpirant sprayed on it. I don't know what the heck that sound was. It didn't come through the mic as obnoxious as it sounded in my ears. Tender evergreens, little gem, hardy zone seven, I'm in zone six. Plenty of people grow them here. Since this is going to be its first winter in the ground, I do want to make sure it gets a heavy coating of that anti-transpirant. If you don't know what that is, that's just a, it's like a milky substance that leaves a waxy coating on the cuticle of the foliage. Now we have an airplane. Very noisy day out here. Spray the plant down heavily, top, bottom, get onto the stems, make sure there's runoff. That dries and forms just an extra layer of protection. And that's mostly for transpiration, so desiccation i should say strong cold dry winds blowing on the plants that's kind of how our winters are cold air that's very blustery and dry not a lot of humidity here during the winter it's probably like 25 to 40 percent somewhere in there that's not something you want on the foliage of the plants particularly plants that aren't fully hardy to the zone so this being a zone seven i want that sprayed down heavily i will probably throw some lights on it not led those are useless for providing heat to the plants some like C7s or C9s. Plug those in if we have some extreme cold, like below 15, just to help keep some heat in there. And I have frost blankets I'll put over it too. That's because I want to make sure this gets through its first winter with as little damage as possible. Ideally every winter with very little damage, but it's its first year in the ground. It's going to be the most susceptible to things going awry with it. And it's its first year in the ground. Got tongue tied there, had to try again. Bananas, that I, that was me, I did that. Uh, it was in the way. The Alexander palm, that whole drama got resolved in last week's video if you wanna know everything about it. I had to lay it down here, wrap it up, because the people who store it for the winter, they, they weren't able to get it on time. I don't feel, I'm not diving into all that. It kind of gets me going. And I don't feel like getting amped up about that right now. I had to smash some things in order to walk around the palm tree. That's all that's about. I didn't really care because I figured I'm gonna be cutting these down in a few weeks anyways. Although with that forecast, there's only a few nights they're predicting in the 20s in November. But again, I don't really trust the forecast two weeks out. If that is true, then these bananas will keep <laughs> looking just fantastic all the way until December. I doubt that's the case. When it's not warm, don't expect much growth out of them. That's the only reason I haven't gone in and pruned much of the junk out of them yet, because I wanted to see if they were gonna keep pushing out growth. And they do have some growth coming out. Still in the 70s, some days in the 80s, some days in the 40s, it's just that time of year. When it's warm, they move, they grow. When it's normal, October into November weather, they just sorta sit still. So they may not be looking their best, but I'd rather be looking at this than just a pile of mulch. And it wouldn't make sense to mulch them right now anyways. It's gonna be too hot. There's still a lot of sun and warmth that could cook them inside of the mulch piles. It just doesn't make sense. The insets, well, you know, they've certainly looked better, but considering mid-20s, not too bad. 
<laughs> they are still pushing out fronds, not fronds, pushing out new leaves. I would imagine once the ones that are in the middle come out, anything else that comes out should come out looking nice. I'm thinking with these, I may come in here, cut everything off of them, dig up the stumps, cut the roots off, wash the roots off, and take them inside to store them. But I don't really have a cool place to store anymore. So like, mm hmm, huh. Pardon me for thinking out loud here, clearly did not come prepared for this video today. We'll have to keep these in active growth in order to overwinter them, which isn't really that big of a deal. Growth space is really warm and humid, good amount of airflow. It'll be fine. I just have found bananas in general to be a pain to grow inside. Not that they're necessarily hard if you have the light and heat for them, they'll grow. They'll grow prolifically if it's warm enough, but man, they can be pest magnets sometimes with the spider mites, mostly mealybugs. Haven't seen a lot of mealybugs. I'm still spraying preventatively about once a week just with soaps. I try and get into the nooks and crannies, not of these, the plants that are in there in the in the growth space in there, which I don't think we've gone in there yet. I haven't filmed that part of the video. We'll get in there and talk more about that stuff in a bit. This is all leading up to me saying I may have space to take these in and keep them in active growth. Either way, when I do that, and be cutting everything off of them, digging them up to being a stump, repotting them, and sticking them in there and just letting them do their thing. They'll be fine in there. I've overwintered the Enset Moreliais, the red obsidian bananas, many times. There's one I had for several years until it bloomed. When they bloom, they die. But it did fine in there. It just grew and got kind of stretchy sometimes. That was with old lights, though. I have new lights. Maybe they will do better. Just thinking out loud here. I don't, don't know what I'm going to do. I'm going to figure it out as time goes. I have plenty of time, at least a few weeks, so that's going to be much of a concern. The impatience? Well, yeah, not much to look at here. It doesn't really take a lot of colds to kill back the impatience. One thing I do really like about that, though, just impatience in general, I would prefer they're more cold hardy, but that's all right. They are an annual where when they go, they go. If I'm on top of my game with doing things outside, I usually will get to them when the frost is predicted and cut them all the way to the ground before it happens because it's a lot easier to remove them before they turn to mush. When their stems are still hard, you can cut right through them, cut them back to the ground much more easily. Once they get to this point where they're rotten, it's just not as pleasing to work with. They're slimy and it's not as quick. You don't have the same efficiency. However, do you see, do you see impatience here? Not really, right? There's one, two, about three, maybe four clumps. This was completely full of them up until we had that cold freeze a couple weeks ago, week and a half ago, and they're gone. I didn't remove them. They just are such a thin stemmed plant that they kind of dissolve on their own. It's not like some annuals, I'm trying to think. There's some, what, like coleus and some begonias and lots of annual grasses that get a stringiness to them that makes it hard to rake them out and they, they gum up inside your clippers when you're trying to get them out. But the impatience, if you forget them, they just kind of dissolve and disappear. I appreciate that. Thank you. That's work for me. I'm good with that. Not much to report over here. Things are just nice and green. Impatience are gone. You all saw the impatience down there. The gingers have largely not died back, but they got a lot of damage. They'll be okay though. They're perennials. Get to see more out of them next year. The pool planters, I mean, there's not much to say. It got really cold. Look at that. Not, yeah. There's still a surprisingly good amount of color inside of these. I really actually, I could come in here and give these a cutback and they might flush back out. I just don't really see a reason to go to all that trouble though when in a few weeks I'm going to need to pull all of this out. Right? Maybe I could. Uh, I'll figure that out. You can see the side closest to the pool. The pool's nice and warm right now. That's looking much better than the rest, isn't it? They've been enjoying their steam baths. This hydrangea tree, I think it's okay. It really defoliated very quickly out of nowhere. Not totally out of nowhere. It's just something here isn't quite making sense to me between the two. This one was later to get started. Just to be expected because this spot gets less sun than this side does. But why this one is quicker to defoliate than that one doesn't make sense to me when the pots or the plants in the pot underneath it look so much better than the plants in the pot underneath that one. And they're probably, I'm trying to think, that's a, I think that that's an eight foot. So these are, I don't know, we'll say 12 to 14 feet apart, something like that right here. I didn't think that there would be that much of a difference between the 
air right by them, but it doesn't take much. Look, this spot over here in my garden, that's much warmer than this spot over here. It just has to do with where the cold air travels. It takes the path of least resistance, hot air moves over it. So maybe the hot air is moving up. Could have just been things are more extreme and exposed over here. That's probably what it is. Again, thinking out loud. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed that fun little mental salad you got there. This one is much more exposed. And I talked about how we've had some pretty intense winds. Like, look, there's, there's nothing left up there. Not much anyways. These maples normally hold on to their color well into November, but the wind just blew it all out. And I spent a few hours out here working on leaves. So it would make sense that the air is probably just blowing through here and ripping those leaves off. Okay, all right. Maybe you figured that one out. Not much going on up here right now. I'm thinking I'm going to cut the buckeye down, which is probably disappointing to some people. Really like that tree. I really like the tree too. But the thing is, buckeyes are really toxic and I've got this dude right here. I just, I can't run the risk of him picking up the buckeyes and chewing on them or chewing on any part of the plant. And it's not just turbo. The neighbor's dog too, his name's Dude, he's a yellow lab, just a few months younger than Turbo, and they're like best friends. They pass things through the fence and play with each other all the time, and Dude, the dog up there, loves to grab branches. I watch him just grab things right out from the side of the fence and rip them out. I don't want to risk making their dog sick. It's not worth it, so I'm gonna cut that down. I'm going to be putting in a row, the plan anyways, to make him get a hold of them. I would like to put in a row of the Pragans viburnums possibly from that corner behind this oak tree all the way down into here. There's a Pragans, right, just punch the lens. Hopefully that didn't disrupt the video too much. There's a Pragans right there. So I know that they'll do okay here. Very similar light on that side of the fence is on this side. It'll provide some more privacy. It's nice, glossy, pretty evergreen foliage. I won't put them too close together. They can be somewhat open on the bottom, pretty much just like theirs are right there because the dogs love playing with each other and I don't want that to like block them from having their fun doggy playtime but i do want something up here because once all the foliage is out of the honeysuckles and out of all the trees it's just like a straight view right into their house and a straight view from their house right into mine and into the pool and, and i like it so need to get more evergreens in the ground that's my goal for november get lots of things planted i have several ready to go i just mentioned that i have some more magnolias in the mail talked about those in a video not too terribly long ago the k paris magnolia which is a cross between the little gem, which is the one over there that I just love. Little gem stay smaller, maybe 20 feet. If you live here in zone six, they tend to get hard killbacks every decade or so because we get a really bad random freeze. Further south, 25, 30 feet, maybe even bigger than that over a very long time. Regardless, the thing I like about the little gem is when it stays smaller, they can be a little bit more tolerant of shadier conditions, shadier than a regular, just full-blown Southern Magnolia and they just flower fairly profusely for a tree. The one that I have right here and one that's going in the front yard, they've been in bloom for, or had flowers on them, I should say, since I got them. So it's been like six weeks, maybe eight weeks. Just there's almost always a flower on, not right now, when I'm filming the video, of course, but usually there's flowers on them and they smell fantastic. I want more evergreens. I love the smell of the magnolias. The K Paris is a cross between or it's thought to be a cross between the Little Gem and a Bracken's Brown, which is much more hardy here in Zone 6. Even into Zone 5 with the Bracken's Brown, they stay up smaller than the Bracken's does. They can usually take it just a little bit less light than a true fully blown Southern Magnolia, and they grow fairly quickly. And you get some of that repeated flowering throughout the season, throughout summer and into fall, not just like a nice big show of flowers early in the season. One of those K Paris Magnolias is going to go right here. I decided to order them, do mail order. One, because I was just curious. Ordering trees, sometimes it can be fun. The local nurseries who have them only have them in really massive sizes. They're like eight to 10 feet tall, between 450 and $700. And that's that's okay. I mean, not that I don't, don't want to spend that on the trees, but you're investing in time with those kinds of prices, especially on evergreens. But the K Paris isn't a slow grower, so I'm not, as motivated to spend that kind of money on a tree when it's eight to 10 feet tall and could probably get a smaller one and just wait a few years. But I did the mail order, one, because don't wanna spend a ton of money. Two, digging up here, getting these viburnums, the magnolia that's going to go up here, getting all these things planted, it's going to be a nightmare. The ground up here, it's like cement. It helps to go in with a thin auger and drill several holes and then like go in with a pickaxe and start picking away at the holes. And then usually once you get about, about 
10 inches to a foot down, it's easier to dig somewhere in there, but it takes a long time. It's not just a quick grab the shovel, dig a hole, throw the planting kind of thing. Getting things planted up from right here all the way down there, it's going to be a big project that's going to take a very long time. And I'm not even going to be using that many plants. The Pragans viburnums should be spaced, I'm going to say at least five to six feet apart on both sides. So I don't even need that many. If I'm able to find them, I'll be planting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, maybe nine tops. That's actually kind of a lot. Am I overdoing it? Is I'm doing too much here? I don't think so. Well, probably not. They're not that expensive for being the size that they are and the kind of growth you get out of them. That will look nice. The Cape Harris Bagnolia is only going to be about four to five feet tall in a smaller container. It'll be easier to get planted up here. So I've never made that point. So even if I were to go with one of the ones that are in like the 30 gallon pots that are massive, I don't, I, I could. I could get the whole dug for it up there, but well, I don't want to. <laughs> it should take a very, very, very long time. And I'm someone, I like to dig holes. I enjoy tough soil and it's just, it's a good workout and you feel really accomplished digging holes, but uh, uh, everything has its limit and I think that's a bit too much. I just don't feel like it. I'd rather grow something smaller and wait for it to grow. So there are two Cape Harris Magnolias coming in the mail. It's about to talk about this space. I'll wait. One's going up there where I showed you and the other one's going, it's kind of a hard spot to see, but back here, you can sort of see the grill. There's an opening in this area that should be perfect because eventually this maple tree has to go. It's planted way too close to the house. That's going to be a problem for the foundation and the gutters are probably already starting to clog up with leaves. I don't feel like having to clean my gutters all the time, so it needs to go. In the long run, it'll be better to not have that tree here and then get the magnolia in the ground now while it's still smaller and that will start to fill in that space. And then when this tree is gone, it'll have more space to fill out. The spot where the magnolia will go is going to be, I don't feel weird because I'm kind of filming the neighbor's house or something back away and just use your imaginations. Where the magnolia is going to go is going to be about 18 feet out from the foundation over here, which should be a safe distance because that Cape Paris shouldn't even get 18 feet anytime soon it'll probably push 20 to 25 feet maximum in its lifetime but i think that's going to take a long time there should be plenty of space there for its roots to grow and it's not a maple tree that's you know going to get 50 60 feet tall i love the maple trees and it's always sad to cut down a tree but it just doesn't seem like a smart idea to let this stay here and i'm already starting to see where the roots are starting to push things up close to the foundation under the patio so that means it's going to get rid of this thing next spring or the spring after would probably be smart for that to go. And then there'll be a tree planted over there that will have some time to grow in the, a more shady spot while it's smaller, but it'll get more sun and in that space, nice evergreen foliage that puts out a nice fragrance because they flower freely throughout the summer. And that's what I want to see. The pool, not pool, patio pots. What are these things called? Deck planters. These. Well, I'm just... We didn't even really need to talk about them, do we? It got down to like 24 degrees. Wouldn't be expecting much more out of them. Super Tuny Vista bubble gums, they're studs. They look good. Canary wing begonia, still looking pretty good. This spot does tend to be a little bit warmer, so I'm not shocked by that. I am debating going in and cleaning them out now. I just don't see a reason to. With the forecast making it look like things are gonna be fairly mild, what would the point be, right? I just leave them. They look kind of trashy. That time of year though, things can look trashy. It's whatever, it's cleaning time. Cleaning and planting time. Things aren't always gonna look pretty back here in November. I don't have one of those gardens. Maybe someday. I'm trying to get more evergreens in the ground every single year so things can look nice all year, but that's a work in progress. The Tradescantia nanux didn't suffer much damage at all from that cold. You can see there's some burn on them, but not too bad. I'm going to come in here and cut a bunch of it out just to save the cuttings for next year in case this doesn't come back. As I've said, I'm in zone six, so it's, I have no expectation of them coming back, but just the regular Tradescanta palita, the purple heart, they usually come back for me, just not with a ton of vigor. And then some of y'all have told me that you're in zone eight and it's been coming back for you. So I don't know, we will see. Maybe with enough mulch, this whole spot gets mulched heavily because of the gingers over here and the sable palms down below and the banana clump. It's just, this whole spot turns into a giant pile of mulch during the winter time. Maybe that'll be enough to keep them warm and looking nice. I don't know. I think that that's pretty much Everything there is to say for what's going on out here. Lots of thoughts and ideas and plans. And yes, those are all leaves. Lots of leaves I need to get in there and clean out, which isn't a big deal. It only takes a few minutes. I kind of enjoy it. I'll just go in there with the net, like swim down to the bottom and scoop them up. It's fun. I don't mind it. I'm debating planting something in the Miami planters back here for winter interest, but I'm also telling myself that I shouldn't. Because I really should cover those up for the winter time. They're supposed to be frost proof and won't crack when it gets really cold, but I don't know if I trust it. I think the real move with those would be to cover them up with some tarps and 
claws and things like that just to protect them. Still some palms outside. Bismarckia looking good. I actually need to pull this into more sun. I think it would appreciate the angle of things has shifted. So it's not getting a ton of light, but it's doing fairly well. It's grown three or four. I had to cut one off earlier in the year because of some storm damage. So I'm gonna say probably four or five new fronds since it completely defoliated last winter when I left it outside to 13 degrees. I'm just happy it's alive. That's where I am with that plant. And it's not just alive, it's looking pretty good. It does need more light though. Pindu's looking good. Still a baby, not much to look at right now. Mules, they're just awesome. I love these. Most of the palms that are out here right now, with the exception of the Bismarckia, they will stay out here until temperatures are around 15 degrees. That's when I'll move in the mule palms, the Pindu and Pindu Pindo. I don't know how you say it. Butia, how about that? And then the windmills. The windmills all leave out to like 10 degrees. They're in a pot, so I have to be really careful with them. They're in the ground. I wouldn't worry about 10 degrees Fahrenheit with them. So that's the next thing. Need to buy mulch before the stores all sell out of it because it is the end of the year for them having those things in stock. Shrubbery and then just repositioning things and picking some things up. The things that have been knocked over by storms and by dogs come in with the more hardy plants. Probably move the mule palm. Set right there in the middle. Bring the windmill palms forward. Fatsia japonica. I have a few of those. Those look nice out here during the winter time. Same thing with the, what was it? I was just looking at it, where to go? Oh, some of the different hardy yuccas. So lots of fun things to have out this time of year. The same stuff I bring out in late winter, early springs, the same stuff that I look forward to having outside this time of year when I can't have the tropicals out. Turbo, you wanna come inside? Okay, that's it for the backyard. So lots of cleaning to do. I'm gonna grab these, take them inside and have a look at the grow space. Oh, so moist. I'm sorry, I forgot. Some of you hate that word. That was probably uncomfortable for those of you who can't stand the word moist. The things are looking better out here. I haven't done much since, I guess it was just last week's video, wasn't it, where I brought all of the plants inside. I did manage to get the floor cleared off, not cleaned up, just cleared off, just step one of many steps. Got most of the little plants moved onto the shelves over here. Nothing out here for the most part is where it's going to be staying with the exception of the larger plants over here on this side the croton in the back. I'm probably going to move that over here, but the Eureka palm, that stay in there. Medanillas that are up there on that shelf, they're staying there. I just had to get everything in as quickly as possible with that sudden cold that we had. I didn't have a lot of time to prep it out or think about it, so I put things where I thought made sense, and then I also just had everything on the ground. Everything that's over here up on the shelves, those were down on the ground. Apparently there's a human on my front porch for the package. It's like an Amazon truck just went and driving by. I'll have to check that out in a minute because there's some things I'm waiting for to use out here. I have a new rack that's coming in that's about the same height as these right here. These tables that are stacked on each other. A rack will be safer. I'll have proper drainage to put in them with pipes set up to run drainage through all of them. One thing I noticed when I was getting all the plants just up off the ground onto the shelves, which is I think just last night that I was doing that, that I'm gonna have a fair amount of free space to play here with plants this year. I've been going through the process really since a couple years ago, but big time this year of just what do I wanna keep? What don't I wanna keep? Some of the plants I've had for years, but maybe they're just not doing anything for me anymore. Like the, I have a begonia up here that it's a nice begonia. I had two of those, I don't need two. One of them's fine. They take up a good amount of space, they're very bushy. This is a Ciba Blue that did not do well with the cold night that we had the week prior to when it got really cold and I moved the other plants inside. So that's why there's a seemingly dead plant sitting up there that I need to do something with. I'm thinking what's going to end up happening out here is the big croton, it's all the, back there. You can kind of see it sticking up above everything. I think that's going to come over here and then my big monstero. Let's go find the Thai. Where's the Thai? Over here. The Thai constellation, which just opened up a new leaf. So even though it's not getting a ton of light over here, it still seems to be happy. That is probably going to end up over here in this corner. So I'll create a, somewhat of a wall here to look nicer from over there when I'm filming videos. And I think that the way I've set things up here is going to allow just better light in general by going from high in one direction and sloping everything this way. As opposed to in the past where I've had like tall plant here, tall plant there, tall, like they've been spread out too much. Get all the tall plants in a row, have them in a row back here and then in a row over there and then let things go gradually this way because there are windows over here which don't provide a ton of light. 
but they do something. They're not big windows, they get mostly morning light. They don't do a ton for everything else out here, but just the overall aesthetic of spending a lot of time out here during the winter, I think I will like it. I already like it much better having this more open. It'll be even better when I get the ficus moved out of the way and it's more medium to small plants and then open floor and then racks and then tall plants back there. I think that's going to look nice. As far as the actual plants go, things seem pretty good considering that they did get hit by some cold orchids. I have multiples that are blooming. Beautiful Cattleya back here. This is Hawaiian Wedding Sun Cattleya. Has a decent fragrance to it. Smells quite nice. That's a little washed out. Sorry about that. Have some fun spikes coming up here out of one of my Phalaenopsis orchids. And then the Sherry Baby Oncidium is flowering. Really short, stubby flowers, but I'll take it. They smell nice. Some Heliconias sitting up here on the table that are going to probably end up going into the pond. What I've been waiting for to come in the mail that I was talking about that Amazon truck are more of these baskets that I have this Stromanthe set inside of. There's wicking cord. Well, there's going to be wicking cord in those. That's what I did with them last year. That keeps them on a, like a self-watering, basically. Not basically, it is self-watering to have the wicking cord in there, down there into the water. Stromanthes did really well with that last year. The baskets that I have that are hanging in here, those are suspended from are for eight inch pots. So I have new ones coming for 10 inch pots and then I can have the Heliconias. There's one right there and have them over here on the side. I think with the amount of warmth, humidity, and it's gonna be really bright because I have a whole bunch of lights here that need to get hung up. Those heliconias over here, I think that they'll do well with that. As long as it's nice and warm, I'm not worried about rot with them. In places that are tropical, they grow them like practically as pond plants sometimes. Sorry the phone's being so noisy. I don't know about y'all. I have elderly parents and there always seems to be something going on. So I don't like to put it on silent. Sometimes it annoys people and they're like, why don't you turn your phone off? Can't, got people that I have to worry about sometimes. That's just life. Little dingy noises, not a big deal. I do have a whole bunch more that needs to get organized over here. Again, there's just a lot of dropping stuff down when they came in. So the variegated alocasia that I always love. It's Okinawa silver, it's really pretty foliage. I wanna make sure that gets moved into some more light. Down over there, I have some hibiscus. I need to go around to the hibiscus corner. <laughs> Outdoor shower, just sitting here. You're gonna have to do something with that. Freckles Croton and the Big Croton, both getting moved. The Matophyllum will probably end up over there. I did bring in a banana, which you can't even see. I'm about, we'll get to that. This is our next week's vlog. I'll be doing a bunch of work out here and y'all can hear me go through the process of deciding what to go wear on the shelves as I get them set up. Not any other exciting news going on out here, but got a fun flower popping up here out of this curcuma. Does that look nice? Wasn't expecting that getting a little bit late into the season, but I guess it missed enough of the cold spells to keep it on the move. Here we are. This is the beginning of where we'll be for the next several months, working on plant stuff where I'll be and filming videos and then just got to have a look at what needs to be wrapped up outside. My time is very split right now into two different places. So I'm looking for, not looking forward to, I love being outside, but it's just a different vibe when I'm back and forth between maintaining this space and the backyard. I've also reduced the heat in here. It's still warm, it's like 74, but I was going 77 to 84, which is the temperature I kept things at most of last winter. But it's, you gotta water a lot <laughs> with those temperatures. So I dropped the heater down to the plants, still seem to be loving it. And it's not that cold outside. It's cold for a few days, but it's still, I'm pretty sure we're above average here in St. Louis for this time of year. So I just don't want to be blasting 10,000 watt heater in here. I don't really need to be doing that. The plants seem to be perfectly happy and fine. Forgot to turn the waterfall off. It's gonna take you time to remember that. If that was annoying, I'm sorry. Edanella's looking fun. I want to make sure that those stay probably right about where they are because they look nicer. Oh, I said Medanella's. I never told y'all, I got another one. It's over here. You can't really see it because it's much smaller than the other one. It's the same type as this one. So hopefully someday there'll be a little screen of just fun pendulous pink flowers hanging down for everybody to enjoy. That'll be fun. Hibiscus have been growing well. They're flowering. It's hard to see. There's no light over there. There's no point in going around. I gave this, look at how big this hibiscus is. This thing's freaking huge. That's a seminal pink. And I cut probably two to two and a half feet of stem off of it before I moved in because it's kind of lanky. The spot it was in wasn't getting a ton of light by the end of the season. Most of the summer it got a good amount of sun, but you know, fall, light changes. And it's already starting to push out new growth and flush out and seem happy. The heliconia, which are always the plants that I'm the most, I want to say nervous about moving inside. They're the ones that are the most 
prone to just throwing an absolute fit for me when I bring them inside. Well, those are the crotons, which that croton, holy frick, does it need water. I watered very heavily last night, but I missed this back corner. That and the tie still need to be watered. So I'm going to do that as soon as I put the camera down. Hello, Konya. It's been in here for like a week and a half, and almost every stock on it has opened up a new leaf with new ones coming out the middle. That's very encouraging. So we have a long season to go with the plants inside. I've never moved them inside this early before. It feels weird to me even being in here in October with plants. Normally right now I'm doing some cleaning, getting things set up and preparing to move the plants inside. Usually they come in around early to mid November, sometimes late November, not early to mid October like they did this year. So everything I was planning on doing late October to prep for the plants to come in, I'm doing now in late October, but with the plants already in here. So that's a bit of chaos, but that's all right. A little bit of chaos can be fun as long as it stays organized and don't lose my mind with things. Okay, yeah, that's everything. There are lots of plants and things that I could go through and talk about, but I have a feeling as I'm working in here and like actually placing the plants, hopefully in a week or two, from right here and over, it's gonna work. Pretty different. Well, at least it will to me. Maybe it won't that look that different to y'all, but shelving and more organization and plants space up more appropriately. Like right now, those tall plants, short plants, tall plants. I don't like that. Doesn't make sense for airflow and for lighting. It'll be nice to get all the pieces put together and to be able to sit and settle down for the season. Just have fun playing with house plants. On that note, have some fun house plants coming in the mail because I have been getting rid of some of the things that I don't want. So if the two begonias don't need them. That takes up space. There are other plants I would love to have that I don't have space for. So that's why I went out with the old and got some new stuff that'll be coming in here hopefully the next few weeks. And they're all plants that I'm like actually really excited about. So fingers crossed are any issues with shipping anything of the sort. So hopefully it'll be good. Uh, that's enough. Got a World Series game to watch. Who y'all rooting for? Phillies or Astros? <laughs> Maybe the wrong crowd for that. Hope everybody's doing well, having a great day and a great life, and everything is going absolutely beautifully for you. And of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.